What if the United States and China were to engage in total war? A daunting question indeed, but it's important to explore the possibilities. Now to understand this, let's take a step back into the Cold War era, a time of tension and ideological battles. This was a period when the United States and China occupied significant roles on the world stage. The US leading the capitalist West and China, a pivotal player in the communist East, were two nations with starkly contrasting ideologies. In this era, the United States and China were often seen as two giants on opposite sides of a grand chessboard, each maneuvering for strategic advantage. The ideological differences between the two nations were not just about economics or politics, they were fundamentally about visions of human society, about freedom and authority, individualism and collectivism. The nature of total war during this period was different from traditional warfare. It wasn't merely about battles fought on land, sea, or air. It was a war of ideologies, economics, and technology. It was a war where the home front was as crucial as the battlefront. In a total war, every resource a nation possesses is mobilized. The entire society is geared towards the war effort. The distinction between civilian and military resources blurs, and the goal is not just defeating the enemy's military, but also crippling their capacity to wage war. During the Cold War, this concept of total war was omnipresent. It was a war of attrition, a war of endurance, a war where victory was often measured not in battles won, but in the ability to simply keep fighting, to outlast the enemy. It was a time when both the US and China invested heavily in their military capabilities, in their economies and in their technology, all with the aim of gaining an upper hand in this global standoff. As we transitioned out of the Cold War era, the nature of conflicts began to shift. Let's delve into this evolution. Post-Cold War, the face of warfare began to change. The world saw a shift from limited conflicts to more comprehensive ones. The stage was set for an era of comprehensive conflict where no stone was left unturned and no tactic was off the table. This was no longer a game of chess on a single board but a multi-layered three-dimensional battle where the players adapted and innovated in real time. The role of technology in this shift cannot be overstated. From drones humming in the skies to artificial intelligence predicting enemy moves, technology has become the backbone of modern warfare. It's not just about boots on the ground anymore, it's about bites in the cloud, signals in the ether, and eyes in the sky. Space capabilities have opened a whole new front, turning the once peaceful cosmos into a potential battlefield. But this shift wasn't just about the tools of war, it was also about the nature of conflict. The continuum of conflict expanded, with a mix of conventional, unconventional, and even nuclear threats reshaping the landscape. Conventional warfare with tanks and troops was now just one part of a wider spectrum. Unconventional strategies such as cyber warfare and information manipulation became key elements of this new era of comprehensive conflict. And then there's the nuclear threat. The Cold War may have ended, but the threat of nuclear conflict didn't disappear. It simply evolved, becoming part of this larger, more complex picture. Today, the nuclear threat is not just about mutually assured destruction. It's about tactical nuclear weapons, nuclear deterrence, and the delicate balance of power that keeps the world from falling into chaos. This shift has reshaped the nature of warfare. But how has this impacted the US and China specifically? Recent reports suggest that China is preparing for a direct attack on America. But why and how are they preparing? In a world where the nature of conflict is rapidly evolving, China appears to be gearing up for a potential comprehensive conflict with the United States. Recent intelligence and media reports have raised suspicions about China's strategic intentions. A series of incidents involving Chinese nationals attempting to gain unlawful access to American military facilities have stoked fears of infiltration by People's Liberation Army agents. These agents, suspected to be military-age men, are believed to be part of a larger strategy aimed at potential sabotage and even biological warfare. This is a deeply concerning development as it not only represents a significant escalation in tensions, but also poses a direct threat to American national security. But why would China consider such drastic measures? The answer lies in the ideological differences that have been a constant source of friction between the two superpowers. China perceives the United States as an existential threat, a viewpoint exacerbated by the ongoing ideological and economic rivalry. The Chinese regime, guided by its unique blend of authoritarian capitalism, sees American democratic values 
as a challenge to its own model of governance. This ideological divide, coupled with the competition for global influence has led to a significant escalation in tensions. As a result, China's preparations for a potential conflict extend beyond mere military maneuvers. They reflect a broader strategic approach that incorporates elements of unconventional warfare, including cyber attacks, economic warfare, and information operations aimed at undermining the United States' strategic position. In essence, China's preparations are not just about gearing up for a traditional military confrontation, they represent a comprehensive strategy designed to counter the perceived existential threat posed by the United States. China's preparations signify a palpable tension. But what about the United States? The United States is not sitting idle. There are countermeasures in place. In response to the potential threats posed by China, the United States has a range of strategies in place. These strategies are designed not only to protect American soil but also to ensure the safety and security of its allies in the region. A key part of this approach is maintaining a strong military presence in Asia, which serves as a deterrent against any potential acts of aggression. One of the most significant aspects of the United States strategy is its network of alliances and partnerships. The U.S. has long-standing security obligations to several countries in the region including the Philippines and Taiwan. These commitments are not just about protecting these countries from potential threats, but also about maintaining a balance of power in the region. The presence of American military forces in these countries sends a clear message. Any attack on these nations will be seen as an attack on the United States itself. The potential scenarios for conflict with China are diverse and complex. One possible flashpoint is the South China Sea, an area of significant geopolitical importance where territorial disputes have been a source of tension for years. The United States has consistently asserted its right to freedom of navigation in these waters, a stance that has put it at odds with China which claims large parts of the sea as its own. Another potential scenario is a Chinese invasion of Taiwan, a democratic island that Beijing considers a breakaway province. The United States has a complicated but crucial relationship with Taiwan, providing it with arms to defend itself while not officially recognizing it as an independent country. If China were to attempt an invasion, the US could find itself drawn into a direct conflict. These are just a few of the potential scenarios. The United States countermeasures are designed to deter such conflicts from happening in the first place. However, if deterrence fails, the US is prepared to defend its interests and its allies. With both nations gearing up, the question remains, who would win in the event of a total war? A total war between the US and China is a daunting prospect. The outcome of such a war is uncertain. In the face of such a colossal conflict, the only certainty is uncertainty. The variables are too many, the stakes too high, and the players too unpredictable. The uncertainties are vast and varied. They range from the scale of the conflict to the weapons used, from the duration of the war to the number of nations involved. Would it be a limited conflict or a full-blown war? Would it involve conventional weapons or would we see the terrifying return of nuclear threats? How long would it last and how many nations would be drawn into the fray? The risks are equally significant. The toll on human life would be unimaginable. Cities reduced to rubble, economies devastated, societies uprooted. The ripple effects would be felt worldwide, destabilizing regions and upending global order. The fabric of our interconnected world could unravel, leaving a legacy of chaos and suffering. The consequences for global stability and human survival are indeed grave. Yet, amidst this grim scenario, there's an irony that can't be ignored. The US and China, the two nations poised on the brink of war, are also deeply interconnected economically. An intricate web of trade, investment, and cooperation binds the two economies. A war would not only shatter this relationship but also send shockwaves through the global economy, affecting everyone from Wall Street to the smallest farmer in Africa. So, the prospect of a total war between the US and China is a sobering thought, but it's a reality we must be prepared for. The hope, of course, is that it remains a possibility, not a certainty. Regardless, our focus should be on fostering diplomacy, strengthening international relations, and promoting peace. Because the alternative is a future none of us would want to face.